Okay, so we're not the mind and we're not the body. We are cheeky little souls. So you might be wondering, okay, I'm a soul, but when I die, what, what happens to me? Now that is a good question. Reincarnation, that is a funky term. Like for example, this little, this, oh, did I squash him? No, this little ant. Yeah, who's he? And the tree over there, or the plants, who, who are they? And karma. Now, we, we've all heard of the term karma, what goes around comes around. But can we go a bit more deeply into it? Can we understand it a bit better? I want to hand you over to Sutapa in our Krishna Wisdom Studios for more information. In a game of chess, whether you're the king, the queen, or the pawn, at the end of the game, everyone ends up in the box. That's the reality of life. Interestingly, over 70% of people that die, die without leaving a will. That's very interesting. Maybe they thought they would never die. Or maybe they just didn't want to think about the prospect of death. But nevertheless, death came. Time and tide waits for no man. The Bhagavad Gita and Eastern teachers give us a slightly different perspective on death. Rather than being scared or fearful of the prospect of death, they actually introduce us to the idea that death can actually be an incredible meditation to reinstate clarity and perspective in our life. It was Steve Jobs who said, every day when I wake up, I question myself, that if today was my final day on this planet, would I be doing what I'm doing today? And he said, if I wake up and for too many days in a row, the answer is no, I know I need to change something. The prospect of death is something that we can use in order to reorder our priorities, in order to remember what's really important. The prospect of death can help us to counter laziness. And the prospect of death also brings great gratitude and perspective back to our life. In addition to this, the Eastern teachers explain that death is not the end. Death is not a full stop, but simply a comma. The indestructible soul existed before this chapter of existence and will continue to exist after. The process by which the soul moves from each chapter to the next is known as reincarnation. It's a core belief of one and a half billion religious people on planet Earth. But it's also a belief which is held by many, many philosophers. It's also a belief which is being embraced by the scientific world since so many studies are showing us that consciousness can travel beyond this physical body and exist separate from this body and mind. And therefore, reincarnation is something which needs to be explored, investigated, because if this life is indeed simply a chapter of a longer story, then it means it shifts the way we look at life. In the process of reincarnation, the soul is transferred from one physical body to another via the vehicle of the subtle body. The soul can accept physical bodies in 8.4 million species of life and therefore plants, animals, aquatics, all have souls within them. The purpose of reincarnation is to tailor make an experience for the soul based upon its desires cultivated in previous lives and therefore based on karma and desire, a soul accepts a new physical body. Imagine you had a scale on one side, complete free will, and on another side, complete fate. 
Now, if we look at life, complete free will, the ability to shape our future without any external factors affecting us, doesn't really seem a feasible explanation of what we experience. On the other hand, complete fate, that we are robotic entities, cogs in a machine, and everything is already decided without us having any say over it, that also seems unreasonable. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us a middle path, that life is an interplay of fate and free will. The fate we experience is karma. In this life and in previous lives, we've performed so many activities. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, our karma from previous lives that we carry into this chapter of existence shapes the situation in which we live. Our body is a product of our karma. The life situation in which we grew up is a product of our karma. Our mental and intellectual and cognitive abilities is a product of our karma. But the interesting thing is, within that context of karma, the soul always has the power to exercise free will. The soul always has the power to design its own destiny. The soul at any point in its journey has the ability to say this is not how the story is going to end. And therefore, although we are affected by karmic consequences carried over from previous lives, we are empowered to design a better future for ourselves by accessing spiritual wisdom, by re-engineering our desires and by cultivating goals which will lead to a more progressive direction for the future. It was the 11th of September and while getting ready for work someone spilt coffee on their shirt. Angry and flustered, they rushed to get changed, left the house, but they were late for work. It was the 11th of September and while rushing to get to work someone's babysitter called in sick. Frustrated and annoyed, the person went on a mad rush to find a replacement, ended up leaving home but was late for work. It was the 11th of September and while driving to work, someone got stuck in a mad traffic jam, horning, irritated, they were late for work. The net result of all of this morning frustration for each one of these individuals was that they were saved from being inside a building that went crashing to the ground, killing nearly 3,000 people inside it. That was 9-11. And in the morning, they were questioning, why did these bad things happen to me? And later on, they realized they were saved from the greatest calamity. It's interesting because we tend to judge life in the moment and therefore we look up at the heavens and say why do bad things happen to good people which really means why do bad things happen to me because I'm a good person. Yet the fact of the matter is that bad things lead to good things which lead to bad things which then lead to good things and like this life is a journey. The things that happen to us in this life, the karma that we experience from previous actions, ultimately all of these reactions are meant to be educational. Even the difficulties that we go through are meant to be for our own emotional and spiritual growth. The Eastern teachers tell us to not simply go through problems, but to grow through problems. Sometimes the most challenging times in our life can be the most rewarding and growth creating times of our life as well. And therefore, next time we experience difficulty and struggle, 
we can remember that there is a background to this, but most importantly, there is a future to this. And if we learn through spiritual wisdom to react to these challenging situations with positivity and spiritual depth, then we can actually become much more wholesome living beings. 10% of life is what happens to us and 90% is how we react to that. And we've just been hearing about reincarnation and karma and we might be thinking, well, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that's happened to me in the past and it's probably going to happen to me in the future, as well as good things. And I'm not in control of that. But we do have a choice. We have a choice how we react in the world. And that's why spiritual life is so important. Because if we can cultivate and strengthen our core spiritual values, we can really, really start to notice the difference in how we, we act with certain people, how they act to us. We can change ourselves and we change the world. You didn't even say goodbye.